Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to talk about continuous lighting for video. Again. But briefly. That's because, one, in an age of high ISO all the time discussions, and I've spoken with you guys about this before, lighting remains far more critical than most people realize. Two, I'm always looking for ways to make my gear smaller, lighter, more flexible, and less expensive. Three, Thanks to my friends at B&H, I was able to go hands-on with a few pieces of kit that I thought might address the challenge. The Genere Monobrite LED Bicolor 750 and their Crux 10-inch Round LED Bicolor, along with an Angler 36-inch Boombox and 4 with B&H support. Thank you, guys. We're giving them all away the first week in January, so party! Here's the deal. Through December 31st, every time you make a purchase at B&H through our affiliate links down below, Follow me on Instagram or Twitter or subscribe to our mailing list. You're automatically entered to win. Now, you know how this works, right? The more of these things you do, the higher the probability that your name is plucked randomly from the whole pot. So go for it. Okay, now that I've had a chance to use the gear day in and day out for many weeks, months, I can give you my full take on each. The bottom line? These are inexpensive products, relatively speaking, that do surprisingly well with features by color chief among them. Some more expensive units don't have and build quality and light output, sometimes as good, other times not quite up to the same standard of those more expensive units that work flawlessly day in and day out. I think they offer a reasonable set of trade-offs that many people may find compelling. Of course, others may not. But let me provide a context via my own personal lighting journey, and then you can discount or amplify as you see fit, and we will then get into the details. In my case, after decades of flash-only photography, beginning with Canon speed lights, well, actually, my first lighting experience was with the Magic Cubes on a Sears 126, a knockoff of the Kodak Instamatic, but geez, I was eight years old. and eventually going as far as high-end pro photo gear uh, to capture dancers mid-flight. My emphasis shifted to video. This meant entering the world of continuous lighting where my first real investment, and I encourage you guys to think of it that way, was plunking down a couple of grand, I think it was actually a little bit more, for a five light Arri SoftBank 4 Fresnel kit, hot lights. But after trundling about with the full kit for a year or three, and nearly melting a few of my human subjects, I moved on to LEDs. For the past couple of years, I've happily standardized on Aperture with a small detour to Luxly for on-camera work in the field. The Apertures have been, for me, the sweet spot in price and performance, and I, I like the people there. Their Lightstorm COB120 with Light Dome has been our usual key light for talking head videos like this one, positioned just out of frame, angled from my right up high. It's a soft, flattering combination, well-built, well-designed, not too loud, though still requiring a little work in post, and powerful enough to allow me to shoot our GH5 at base ISO, and that's important to me. Although, that's not what I'm using today, hold that thought. For two shots, or where I simply need to light up a larger area, say when doing a review of tripods, as I did recently, I've typically relied on Aperture's panels the LS1 Studio, and especially the Lightstorm LS half W to light up the background and when I'm in the field, diffused by using one of those pop-up discs that come in something like the Westcott 5-in-1. I have the 30-inch version, which in turn is attached to a separate stand with arm. This works really well in the studio, but is not my ideal solution on the road, as it means I'm now carrying one additional light stand and I'm adding complexity, setup and takedown time, but I have to say, the LS half W packs down quite small and has a nice wide beam, which is perfect for conversations like the one I had earlier this year with the legendary magnum photographer Elliot Erwitt, Henri Cartier Brisson Foundation's executive director uh, Anya Sear, and Mark Lubell, the executive director at ICP. When I need product shots, highlights, I've settled on Aperture's Lightstorm Mini 20s, which are small, lightweight, very tunable. And if neither as powerful uh, or modifiable as the 120, still, with their barn doors and adjustable lenses, perfect for small product highlights. Though, 
With the exception of one of those mini 20s, I have the three set uh, flight. None of these are bicolor. And that can be a challenge for location lighting when you're like me and don't want to futz with gels. Anyway, it is thus absolutely the case that, again, for me, your mileage may vary, bicolor can be a big help on location, especially in mixed lighting scenarios like a hotel lobby, when you don't have the budget, time, crew, or permits to simulate daylight and then control it by bringing in a pile of HMIs and generators, let alone figure out where to park the grip truck and light from the outside in. It is also absolutely true that single chip onboard lights with Bowen's mount, like the Aperture 120, give us more light modifying options than panels or the little Aperture mini LEDs. These are two of the three reasons, the other being cost, which have led me to explore the market now to see if things have evolved sufficiently since standardizing on Aperture that I might make different choices going forward. Ergo, the Monobright as a potential alternative to the 120 for key. The Crux as a potential alternative to the Westcott for Phil. And the Angler 38 inch boombox as potential alternative to the Light Dome for Key Diffuser. I mean, we're talking 250 bucks for the Monobrite versus 545 or even 750 for the Aperture COB120 original and two respectively. $90 for the Angler versus 150 or 220 for the Light Dome, again, original or two respectively. And on the other hand, 230 bucks for the Crux 10 versus all of 30 bucks for the Westcott 30 inch 5 in 1. So, yeah, the price differentials on ostensibly like for like, but you know they're not quite, are big. In favor of the first two challengers, in favor of the incumbent in the third case. But right, it's not that simple. The Monobrite, like Aperture's 120, is a compact chip on board monolight with a built-in Bowens mount that actually holds softboxes better, more tightly, than the COB120. It worked without incident for hours and hours. I mean, I'd leave these things on for days over multiple recording session. I don't have a colorimeter in the back cave, but for me, the bottom line is my eye did not discern a significant difference in light quality and could have replaced the 120. I mean, it did on a number of videos we did recently without negative impact. So, the big pluses for the Generate beyond its reliability and price, which are no small matters, are that it's even smaller than the 120 and is by color. The controls are simple and they work. The trade-offs to achieve these things are pretty straightforward too, and in my book, reasonable, especially if you're tight when it comes to budget. It doesn't have a wireless remote control like the Aperture does, which I do occasionally miss. It doesn't have the controls separate from the head, nor V or gold mount battery options that come standard as they do on the Aperture, which on the one hand doesn't bother me because I've never had to use battery power indoors and these lights are not bright enough for outdoor use anyway. On the other hand, when you mount the light high, unlike the Aperture, you can't see the display panel nor easily dial in color temperature or output, which is easily solved by lowering the stand momentarily, I admit. Still, when you're on set, death by a thousand nicks is the bane of everyone, and you'd rather adjust from wherever the light will finally be placed. The build quality is not quite the same as the Aperture, though, as I mentioned before, it is perfectly adequate. More importantly, though, in my book, the Generate is significantly noisier. You can argue, as I might, that this is a big deal. It is loud enough that it requires multiple passes using Isotope's outstanding RX-6. Get it? At least it is multiple passes as I do it in my muddled way compared to a single pass for the aperture. But you can also argue that if two passes are all it takes, well, heck, that's an extra five minutes to eight minutes max in post while you grab a cup of coffee. Here's how the two sound unprocessed. Next, Angler's 90 buck, 38 inch boombox octagonal softbox. I'd say it achieves parity in quality of construction and light modification, but actually sets up and takes down faster than Aperture's original light dome because it uses the same kind of umbrella design as, say, Westcott's Rapid Box. The one downside is that it's not quite as round as the light dome, but for our work, interview or YouTube, this is a non-issue. The more important point is that I've been using this guy day in and day out for 
months and it just works. A little more than half the price of Light Dome with the benefit of a side zipper, which makes it easier to attach and detach, although that's not its purpose. And the additional option of a solid diffuser plate, that is the purpose. It's easy to recommend. Last but not least, the relatively novel, though at this point not unique, Crux 10 inch round bicolor LED. My thought was that this very shallow front to back, very clever inward facing ring of LEDs with this optional Sony NP style battery mount on the rear, bicolor and dimmable touch controls work very well. Perfectly round integrated diffuser, high CRI and TCLI scores, and compact dimensions might give me much more flexibility as a fill with little weight or size penalty. In fact, it does. It does away with the arm to hold the Westcott reflector altogether, which I'd previously used on occasion to bounce light from the key into the left side of my face, taking up significantly less room here in the back cave and in other tight spaces. Although I'm actually now bouncing it into the ceiling. It's dead silent, dead silent too, and operated with nary a peep for hours on end over many weeks without complaint. I could see it being used as a key as well for low dramatic lighting close in. I'll probably give that a spin at some point, but that's not how I use lighting. There are three issues, the first of which is a high quality issue to have. This approach has me hungering for a 38 inch version that could somehow be folded up just like the Westcott, but that's just piggy because I don't think that's yet possible. And I don't see how it could be bright enough without a much bigger, louder power supply. But two and a half inches over here instead of two feet, that would be cool. Second, at 230 bucks, it's basically eight times the price of a reflector. Even if you add in the cost of an arm for that reflector, 20 or 30 bucks, it's still three or four times the price, though this is somewhat ameliorated by the fact that right now it comes with the on-camera, what is it, Genera uh, SL57 dimmable LED2, and it's quite nice. Third, with only a 10-inch diameter, it's not as enveloping as a three and a half times as large classic reflector which doesn't matter if you use it as a fill at close range the way I do or bounce it off the ceiling, but as always, your mileage may vary. Fascinating, really. I like the technology a lot. It's clever. That's it. Three different pieces of kit, all aggressively priced and fit for purpose that I'm excited to put in the hands of our winners. It will elevate your production values. I was pleasantly surprised, even if I still haven't found the holy grail yet. Although the $530 Falcon Eyes BL10 TD that I'm also testing is probably the closest competitor to the Aperture COB120 I've seen yet with the advantages of being bicolor and having a removable rechargeable lithium ion battery built right into the head review coming in January. But the really, really interesting light the one I'm using right now and have for the last couple of videos is the $1,500 Anthem 1. Novel industrial design that reminds me of nothing so much as Steve Jobs' next cube in a good way. Incredible beam spread and lighting consistency. I'm looking forward to showing you that. One of a kind interchangeable LED chips, whisper quiet, and an inventor with a messianic zeal to change the lighting industry that, well, yeah, reminds me a bit of Steve Jobs too. His name is Justin Evans. But hold that thought. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. You guys continue to be just incredible, knowledgeable, inspiring, funny. I mean, you're a joy, truly. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Grab one or both of our new Hold That Thought t-shirts you wanted us to put up at our new 3bmepthreadless.com store. Support our work by using our affiliate links down below in the show notes, dropping us coffee money via our PayPal link down below in the show notes, or even better than that, we invite you to become a patron of our work over at Patreon. Link down below. We've created our Patreon page because we are stoked to bring you not only gear reviews, but with our What Were You Thinking and Good World Gone Bad series, historical, educational, artistic morsels, and longer form conversations, not interviews, with world-class photographers, curators, gallery owners, keepers of the legacy, folks like Elliot Erwitt, Anya Sear, Mark Lubell, Ethelene Staley, and friends like Brian Smith, Paul Giroux, Nino Rakicevich, and more. 
we'd really like you to join us to deliver this kind of content regularly. Your support on Patreon will really help us ramp it up. In which case, as always, we thank you for it. That's it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.